You're listening to Fabulosity, in which we discuss what you bring to the tea party, essentials for the modern heroine. I'm Caroline from Sparkles and Crumbs. And I'm Zandra from Fashionably Light. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode, episode 21, in which we discuss perfect Princess Grace posture. We're really proud of that title. <laughs> <laughs> it took us a long time. Mm. Well, I think we picked this topic because posture is actually quite central to your health and lifestyle and the way you carry yourself but it's not something we necessarily always consciously think about and especially as modern day heroines if you work in a desk job or you know you blog or write at your laptop all day um it's not particularly good for your body so <laughs> we're mm-hmm. gonna look at kind of easy ways to work uh, improvements into your day yeah and it's just part of it's an it's a quintessential part of being a heroine is having good posture it's Mm. a model of grace and elegance as well yes yeah (laughs) but before we get into that what is your fabulosity today oh my fabulosity is it's may week in cambridge so this is why i sound very slow and tired because i went to a may ball last (laughs) night and didn't actually sleep and then had to go into work so i am knackered how late were you out oh it's about five when it finished oh wow it was incredible it was champagne and pulled pork and churros and mandarin vodka and a planetarium a planetarium yeah oh that's fantastic like a huge shisha tent in the master's garden oh it was gorgeous wait describe what is the how do you have a planetarium at a ball it's like a huge inflated black kind of tent almost circular tent and everyone goes in and lies on it on cushions and it goes through all the constellations oh, and does little shows. That's so cool. It was magical. Oh, lovely. <laughs> so that was gorgeous. I do have a good night out. Yay. Or oh, indeed, morning out. <laughs> yeah, my I just got the information on my college's ball that's coming up next week, actually. Gosh. And um, it says 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. I love it so much. <laughs> I just want to live in a Mabel forever. Cambridge in May week is such a Kaz, Sparkles and Crumbs place. Like, <laughs> it's just sunny and everyone walks around in tuxes and ball gowns, drinking champagne during the day. I love it. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> so what's your fabulosity? Mine is a little more simple, so hopefully <laughs> I can relate to, people can relate to, to mine if you don't have access to the May balls right now. <laughs> but I just got handed a glass of fresh squeezed orange juice. That's so nice. <laughs> My mom got a citrus press for her birthday, which is kind of amazing. You just cut an orange in half and That's so pull clever. this lever down and out comes the orange juice and it's amazing. Amazing. Oh, that's yeah. just a nice, simple pleasure. <laughs> it is. It's so fresh and delicious. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Right, so on to posture. On to posture. Yes, I'll, I'll sit up straighter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on just these shoulders back. But we've all seen the Princess Diaries scene, I would hope, where, <laughs> where Julie Andrews is teaching her not to slump. Um, <laughs> I think people often don't think of posture as something quite essential to health. It's it's almost your, oh, it's it's presenting yourself well kind of thing. But actually having mm. read into it a little bit more for this episode, it's, it's linked to a whole range of problems. If you have bad posture, it can affect your breathing, mm-hmm. um, obviously back problems. And you'll know about this, Sandra, of opera training, voice problems, muscular aches, indigestion, and compresses your internal organs. Um you just feel worse. You just feel worse, even, even <laughs> mentally as well, I think. And um... Yeah. And I guess, like you said, it's one of those unknown things where you could be feeling awful and you would, you would you might have no idea that it's related to your posture of all things. Mm. So just straighten up. <laughs> <laughs> and it's one of those things where you instantly notice if someone has good posture. Yes. It's, so... it's not so noticeable if someone has bad posture unless it's super bad, but it can really strike an impression if yeah. someone has good posture. If you walk and stand very confidently. Yeah. Um, so one of the main ways people think about doing it is kind of um, or working your postures for yoga. Yoga is very mm. good. I love one of their poses, one of the po- like the central poses, like the mountain pose, where you just mm-hmm. stand properly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 
Out of all of the benefits of yoga, that is sillily one of the best ones. Just and it sounds being so forced to stand still and mindfully. Yeah. But it's amazing how when you start consciously thinking about it, you think like, oh, my shoulders aren't back or I am slumping. Right. Um, yeah. Or slouching. I think we should refer to it as slumping. Slumping. The entire episode. Yes, slumping. You don't slump like this. You don't slump around like this. <laughs> But then what I don't like so much in that film is how she ties her to the chair with the Hermes scarf. <laughs> do, do people actually eat like that? No, is but that like if you're going to do it, uh, you know, kind of Hermes scarf is the nice way to do it. <laughs> it's a fabulous <laughs> way to, you know, bind people. Yes. If you're going to bind people, at least do it with a designer scarf. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So I spoke to my voice teacher who is getting her certification in Alexander Technique tra training this week um, about what her tips are on posture. <laughs> and I said, how, how do you get perfect posture? And she sort of narrows her eyes and says, you shouldn't call it perfect posture oh. because it implies some sort of straightness and um, symmetry when really she's describing posture as a movement. Because you don't want to be stiff. That's like the worst thing you can do for yourself. Like be aware of your yourself going down into the floor and up over your head and just... So kind of feeling rooted, is it? Yeah, it's sort of feeling balanced, I guess, more so than rooted. Because again, rooted might mm. imply uh, stiffness. Okay. But um, it's just this sensation of feeling like your feet are going down into the floor and feeling like your head is going up higher. Mm -hmm. um, and she said, you know, you, you might have heard this before. Imagine there's a piece of string at the back of your head that's pulling pulling you up. Yes. Oh. Yeah, and it's mm. a lengthening and a widening. It's posture, which is, I thought, a really interesting way of looking at it. Yeah, it is quite. Yeah. And something really interesting as well that I didn't know is that your head weighs 10 to 12 pounds. Oh. Doesn't that sound like a lot? That that really is quite a lot. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense, I guess. So when you think of it like that, it's really important that your head is aligned properly or it will really literally weigh you down. Mm -hmm. What's they say you should be very mind... So I think another... Um... Something that's meant to be very, very good for posture is obviously ballet, that kind of thing. Which Audrey Hepburn did. Audrey Hepburn initially trained as a ballerina. That does not surprise me. No, she was she was very sad because she had, I think she had two big feet or something, or was too tall to be a famous prima ballerina. Like, she would never go all the way. But you could tell by the way she kind of held her neck that, um, yeah. <laughs> that she had really incredible posture. And Grace Kelly was another one, hmm. the namesake of the episode. Yay! <laughs> But I think doing sp not sports so much, but activities like yoga and Pilates and um, oh, ballet. Sorry, see, falling asleep. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Another really interesting thing is that massage is incredibly good for posture. That doesn't surprise me. Especially if you work at a desk, but like it's incredible. So I have an amazing, I go to an amazing masseuse in Cambridge who's this Chinese lady who just literally does it in kind of the basement of a nail salon, essentially. <laughs> um, but I've especially sitting at a desk kind of because I don't have good posture the seats we have at work are terrible yeah um and I can feel my shoulders like caving in mm. and like all these knots of tension in, around the back of my neck every kind of and it will build up every couple of months and I'll go get a massage and you walk out and you just feel so much your shoulders feel light yeah they're kind of floating back you feel like you're floating so I think that's actually um I can't remember I read it, but someone said, you know, like, massage isn't, you know, a treat. It's actually a necessity if you oh, work yeah. in a desk job. Hmm. Because it's yanking your shoulders back again and so, so you don't slump. <laughs> yeah, that can be so tough sitting around for long periods mm. of time. When I'm working at home, sometimes without even realizing it, I'm just sitting you at my desk. You get caught in the for... internet or whatever or watching right. a show and you just don't get up. And yeah. um... <laughs> I actually set a timer on my computer for 15 minutes. So to remind myself to get up and do something, even if I just stand up and walk to the other side of the room and pick up a glass of water and come back, I feel <laughs> like that's better for my eyes. It's better for my whole body to get up and move. When I was editing the climbing journal, I was spending 
hours on InDesign just fiddling with things and I had to get up and do yoga about every hour and that was so rejuvenating I I mean I imagine you can't really do that in an office with like people around but oh no I'm quite like I I have like I'm based on my own in the office all the time we kind of have our own office yeah roll out your mat um (laughs) well my my colleague when I shared an office my colleague and I used to do yoga at three o'clock every day Brilliant. We'd find we'd find a video online and do like all these ridiculous poses. In the <laughs> office. Um, but yeah, you might not be able to do that in some offices, depending <laughs> on where you work. But at the very least, I have like even just it's a little page of printed out exercises. It's just as simple as moving your neck around mm-hmm. and stretching your arms behind you, know, your head, and all those quite simple stretches. But just getting up and moving around, I think, does make a big difference. And also, it's as you say, it's that mindfulness. It's mm-hmm. remembering to do it. Right. Because it's quite easy to do something. Mind. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not yeah, even necessarily what you do that makes a huge difference. Mm. But in terms of just maintaining good posture, and this is what Clara, my teacher, says as well, it's not just when you're singing, but if as a singer you want to have good posture, you should be practicing it all the time, whether you're sitting or standing or walking or whatever. It's just, it needs to be natural for you. I think what really helps me with that is exercising my core. And I I have the best posture when I'm in Oxford because I bike a lot. And oh, really? if I have the right posture while I'm biking, like sort of pull your, pull your core in and keep your back straight. Because sometimes you have a, I have a tendency to hunch over when I'm biking. Mm-hmm. But if I am straight, then I sort of maintain that posture and then will carry it into my walking life as well. Hmm. That's quite interesting. Yeah, no, I never thought about kind of engaging your core to do it, but I suppose it is, you know, they do say that's what kind of strengthens your spine. Yeah, and remember, I remember guess so. in your core. Have you seen these amazing pictures of people kind of, you know, these all these ridiculous diet adverts that say, like, you know, you can transform your body from, you know, and yeah. they do ridiculous before and after photos. Uh-huh. There was a spate, I think, of a couple of fe- male and female personal trainers who completely reenacted those within about half an hour of each other and looked incredibly different. One of the key things they did was just stand differently. Yeah. Like, it's incredible. It's so in the first one. We'll put this in the show notes so mm-hmm. you can kind of go to the link and see the pictures. But in the first one, they're slouching over. And in the second one, they look taller and slimmer. Um, their stomachs are flatter. Yeah. Like, it's fascinating how big a change it makes. I did a post on this as well on how to look better in photos. And... It's really just about mo- standing up straight and moving your your head, making your head straight. It mm-hmm. it makes a huge difference. Mm. No, I think you're right. So this is interesting. You can discover your posture type. You go, there's so if a, you stand. What? <laughs> you can discover your posture type. Okay. What are the posture types? So you, if you stand side onto a mirror. And look at the position of your pelvis and shoulders. Apparently, seven about seventy percent of people stand in a, what's called a sway back posture, where your pelvis is slightly tipped back because we spend so much time sitting down. Um, and the pelvis slightly tipped forward is the kind of less common posture type. And apparently, it's really important to bring your pelvis back in, kind of directly underneath you. Huh. So, for those of us who sway back. Apparently, you should squeeze your buttocks in slightly and tuck your tail in, like your kind of tailbone. Um, and kind of, yeah, as you say, stuck in your core. That's so interesting. I mean, it makes sense, doesn't it, I guess? Yeah. But it's that, that... I think I should... I, yeah, I think it's good to be mindful of your posture. I think I should probably be more mindful of it. <laughs> <laughs> because as you say, it's not... It's, you know, it, even from a purely vanity thing, I think it you project yourself, as, as you said at the start, you know, it's about how you project yourself. Right. And I think it's one of those things that's relatively straightforward. We know what we can do better. Mm. It's just a matter of reminding ourselves, like, recording this episode, my posture has improved every minute because <laughs> we keep talking about it and we're, we keep drawing attention to it. And I'm actually sitting, as I record this, on a chair, but I have this pillow behind me, my Louisa May Alcott pillow, and it's, like, at the arch of my back, because that's more comfortable naturally, but I think that might be helping with the pelvis alignment thing as well. (laughs) You're probably right. (laughs) Yeah. My mom has this, like, special therapeutic chair um, that has, like, a curve. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, chairs are important. 
<laughs> in which we discuss chairs. Oh, chairs. I want to massage chairs so badly. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so as kind of, Sandra, obviously work with your breath and kind of diaphragm a lot as um, when you sing opera. Do you have any other tips kind of related to that? Oh, on how we can kind of improve your posture kind of day to day? Well, yeah, I think it all really comes back to the core. And I marvel about this a lot as well. But when you're breathing, you sort of engage your core and expand outwards rather than like bloating out your tummy. Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes that could, you feel like you have less control that way. But if you expand your rib cage when you breathe, it sort of automatically makes you stand up taller as well. Mm, and pushes your shoulders back. Yeah. Do you know what? I read it in style magazine what which comes with sunday times uh-huh. i just remembered it they're doing this kind of feature on like kooky kind of alternative medicines yeah and these, you know, that you're know, kind of bankers and you know rich businessmen are starting to shell out for all these alternative therapies and one of them i can't remember the name of it but it was um where it's kind of massage but the things that are wrong with your body are seen as you trying to protect things or deal with things so apparently people who walk with their shoulders kind of hunched forward which is a lot of us are trying to protect their heart oh that yeah. is kind of cool. Yeah, I guess like it's an instinctual reaction if you, if your heart hurts or something. If you yeah, emotionally, it's the you sort of, of cave assertion, in. isn't it? It's kind of a yeah. Whereas yeah, it's it's confident to sort of push your shoulders back and be like, I can take it. Mm. It's a bit more fearless. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was very really interesting. I have to try and find maybe more links on that. Yeah, that makes Pop sense. Pop in the notes, but um, I found that fascinating. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, another thing about sitting at a desk on a computer all the time, I've read that it's best for your your posture and your health to have the top of your computer screen align with your eye level. Mm-hmm. So that's why, like, right now I have my laptop propped up in a box or I usually put it on top of the complete works of Shakespeare or something so that <laughs> it's um, more at eye level. I'm not hunching down over to look at the screen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In general, I need to remember to stop, like, jutting out my head like a turtle as well. (laughs) Because when I'm trying to read something on the screen, I need to just zoom in on it, really, instead of, like, peering with my neck (laughs) to get a closer look, because that's really bad. your earlobes are meant to be above your shoulders, apparently. Yeah, that seems right. Oh, I still need a massage. I can feel it. (laughs) Oh, my life is so hard. (laughs) (laughs) So is that how you bring this to the tea party? Get a massage. Get massages. It's <laughs> medical. <laughs> yeah. Anything else on posture? Now, you... Think, so who are your posture heroines? I was about to ask you that because I feel like you might have people and I don't... No one comes to mind. I think kind of dancers. Um, old, old Hollywood, obviously, because it's me. Old Hollywood dancers. So kind of Ginger mm-hmm. Rogers and Anne Miller. Mm-hmm. Sid Charisse. If you look at even when they're play, you know kind of they're not dancing in their roles the way and Jane Powell as well just the way they move is as you say that you can they hold themselves very kind of erect and very in, in a very strong way yeah and it makes you look so, taller as well it does make you taller so I definitely say if you want to see what good posture looks like you know Audrey Hepburn's the obvious one and Grace yeah. Kelly and, Kat and Catherine Hepburn as well these people who held themselves very regally um but yeah, I'd say Kate Middleton as well. Mm-hmm. But I'd say watching kind of old, I always recommend watching old Hollywood movies. But um, yeah, say something like On the Town or Easter Parade of Anne Miller. Yeah. She's incredible. And they're good movies anyway. Oh, and wearing heels helps. Does it? Yeah, I mean, do you find that? I think if if you're wearing... Because you're such... trying to keep your balance, you're suddenly so much more aware of how you're standing. Well, it forces you to stand up straighter. If you're wearing like mm. super tall heels... You have to balance yourself so that you're not somehow <laughs> tilting forward, so you do stand up straighter. Mm-hmm. So mm. even if you're not physically wearing high heels, just sort of remember that sensation. Yeah. Oh, no, that's quite a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like you're slightly teetering and trying to keep your balance. <laughs> right. Well, my voice teacher would not condone wearing towering heels because it's all about sort of feeling the... Ridiculous. Feeling your connection with the ground. Yeah. But... Um, having a little right. bit of a heel helps because we're all mm. mostly flat footed anyway. Yeah. And yeah, just remembering what it's like to, to be tottering on heels, tottering, teetering, 
Teetering. Teeter tottering. Teeter tottering on heels. <laughs> or rollerblades. Whichever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't think of anyone in particular that just screams posture to me. Maybe I'll think of someone <laughs> later. But I just, it really strikes an impression when I'm walking down the street with a crowd of people around. It's just ordinary. And one woman yeah. has, yeah, just ordinary people. One woman isn't dressed particularly strikingly or anything. It's just how she carries herself. You instantly notice And them. it's like, oh, she's, she's important. Mm. Mm-hmm. And that's something you can correct for free. Yeah. <laughs> So I guess, well, any other business, we'd all, as always, we love to hear your feedback. Um, yes. So if anyone has any particular exercises they think are great for posture, um, any tricks that work for them, if you work in an office, or if you do kind of, is your problem the complete opposite? Do you do kind of manual labor and have loads of aches and pains from that? What mm-hmm. would you recommend? Yeah. And any other um, posture heroines that you admire? Oh, yes. Anyone we should watch. <laughs> Um, and as always, the best way to get in touch with us is on Twitter at Fabulosity, that's T E A, or just in the comments on the website. Yeah. And we have a correspondent this Yay. week from Danielle on our Broadway episode. She was asking for our advice um, on dressing for a matinee performance. Ooh, that's such a good question. So she's going to see the Phantom of the Opera in Boston. Yay. Mm hmm. And uh, she's going with her mom and wants to know how how dressed up people get for a matinee versus an evening performance. Did you have any thoughts on that? Um, well, I always like kind of slightly overdressing anyway. I'd always be rather more dressed up than dressed down. I'd say, you know, depending on your style, I'd go for, you know, like a really lovely nipped in at the waist sundress, little mm-hmm. mid heels, nothing too dressy. Or just yeah. go all out, just go for opera gloves and like <laughs> a Dita style wedding dress. Or, um, I think, yeah, just, I think dressing up for it because it is an occasion is nice, but not perhaps as overboard as you would for evening, I would right. say. How about you? Yeah, I, I think also it is the Phantom of the Opera, so you can sort of dress based on the mm-hmm. show as well. Like, I wouldn't go wearing a ball gown to go see Rent, for instance. Oh, that's true. I, oh, I love the idea of kind of channeling the show a little bit. I always do that. Yeah, like I went to go see the artist dressed in black and white. <gasps> That's so yes, cool. I dress up for the cinema as well. <laughs> I'm going to start doing that. That's of... a good idea. I did my black <laughs> and black to go see Melissa the other day. <laughs> Perfect. So you're already doing it. Um, but yeah, if I, I'm always a fan of dressing up when there's an occasion to dress up or dressing up to show that you are being respectful to the performers and to the theater. Um, so if you want to dress up, by all means, don't hold back just feel daytime yeah right and the advice i gave her on the website was if you feel overdressed when you get there just pretend like you're going somewhere fancier afterwards yes like the simon doonan yes <laughs> like always dress like you're going somewhere slightly better afterwards uh-huh <laughs> yeah so i think that's that pretty much covers it just dress how you would like to dress mm. um dress nicely but don't feel like you have to go over the top and dress to the theme of the show because that's fun yay (laughs) (laughs) um the only other thing to mention i guess in our any other business section of the episode is that um you may have noticed fabulosity is moving to a fortnightly rather than weekly podcast just because we we are such social butterflies and so separated by oceans, it, it, you know, it gets difficult <laughs> to try and find time to record <laughs> and do it all yes. with all our various projects going on. And we want to keep doing it as well as we can. Um, so the next episode will be in two weeks rather than one week time, but it will be the same day of the week and time. Friday, British tea time as always. Yes. Do you know that we don't really use the word fortnightly very much in uh, in the US? Oh, really? Sorry. Yeah, I didn't know. No, no, no. I think it's so it's so fabulosity. I'm just explaining it in case Ooh. people don't understand. Um, I didn't know what it meant until it was in Harry Potter, and I had to look it up. But it sounds very that's so weird. Formal. Is it, is it <laughs> afraid? I think um, I it is, but it's I think a little antiquated. So a lot of people don't know it. What would you say instead of Fortnite? Every other week, which is way less romantic. I wonder where the word Fortnite comes from. 
No go. I didn't even think of that. Oh. Um, so yes, so that means next week's episode yes. will be out on Friday the 4th of July. And do you want to announce it? Or shall I? It. Oh, I, I really like this title. You do it. Okay. I'm proud of this one. <laughs> yeah, episode 22 is Chivalry for the Modern Mr. Knightley. Woo, Mr. Knightley! <laughs> <laughs> So we look forward to seeing you yeah. then, and don't get to stay in touch in the meantime. Yes, thank you for listening. Ciao. Bye.